Greetings and welcome to CE Institute. My name is Selena Belial and I am the founder and one of the board approved CE providers teaching to massage therapists, nurses, cosmetologists, CE classes to renew their license with CE credit. We also teach board approved NCB TMB hours and we're really well published with industry trade magazines such as Massage Magazine. In this brief training unit, which we're sharing on YouTube, I pulled some information that is included in our hot stone massage home study training. This is a small snippet of what's shared in our home study class and also what we share in our live webinars and in person in classroom training about how massage therapists might select a hot stone bath unit or heater to heat their stones. Now there is some disagreement amongst educators about what is an appropriate heating method and what's inappropriate. Here at the school, we're basically using anything that can measure the temperature within our normal operating range and the school's normal operating range is between 120 to 135 degrees Fahrenheit for hot stone massage. And we want the stones fully immersed in 120 to 135 degree water. Those are our two requirements for hot stone massage heaters. Now, some instructors will say, don't use this, don't use that, which we find to be acceptable. There are certain ways and methods and manners in which to use heaters, use a greater number of heaters, a greater number of types of heaters, if you just do a little bit of work, okay? That little bit of work includes investing in thermometers to put in the heater to maintain your proper operating range. It's usually just that simple. So let's review what we teach as appropriate and inappropriate heating methods. Keep in mind, not everybody agrees with this list, but we'll give you our reasons why you might use it or why not. And if you'd like greater training to be able to use these heaters properly and apply hot stone massage in your practice, we hope we see you at the school for that greater instruction. For best practices, your stone heater should be a device that has an adjustable temperature gauge, okay? Many times as you're taking those palm stones that you just use and reinserting them into the bath, that's going to cool the bath. So you're probably going to need to turn your bath up a little bit during your hot stone massage to keep the temperature consistent. Your stone bath should be a water bath, okay? The stone should be immersed in water at all times during your stone massage when you're using those stones. Keeping the stones immersed in water is the only true way to maintain a consistent temperature. And whatever you use for your stone massage heater, it must be sanitizable. If you're using something that you can't sanitize in between clients, then that would not be an appropriate or professional stone heater. There are stone heaters such as this one specifically made for stone massage. Um, you can also use this for hot towels and other things too. The thing with these heaters is some of them had this preheat um, selection where I think it like turned up to 500 degrees or something and people were overheating their stones and then trying to throw ice cubes in them and then the core of the stone was really hot, but the outside felt comfortable and people were getting burned. So if you are going to use a professional stone heater such as this one and they have a preheat um, selection, I, I don't recommend using that. And that's because if you're using the preheat and it's boiling that water up to 500 degrees or what have you, um, the outside of the stone will probably be burning hot, but the inside's probably going to be cool. Okay, so those stones are going to be too hot to touch, and by the time you can hold on to them, they'll be cold because the, the core of the stone was, was cold to begin with. They were just, you know, cooked to death in an instant minute. Um, the best way to heat your stones is to do so in advance at the correct temperature, uh, maybe even half an hour in, in advance if you have that, um, to appropriately heat the stones. 
Now, some people use turkey roasters, which is almost identical to the stone bath that you just saw. And the matter of fact, I think those professional stone baths are turkey roasters and they just like changed the labels on them and sold them as hot stone machines. Um, and this is after using them for a couple of decades. I don't see much of a difference. Um, the dial, they just use it differently and call it preheat rather than 450 degrees and stuff. Um, I think turkey basters are fine to use. Um, we, we, we teach using these at the school in addition to professional stone warmers. Um, if you're going to use a turkey baster, you want to make sure that the heating device can operate in a temperature between 120 and 135 degrees. Okay, that's usually the operating range of stone massage. Now, some of these heaters that are not made for stone massage might only start at 150 degrees. If that's what you have, that's not going to be an appropriate stone heater. You need those cooler temperatures because this is going to be applied on human skin. One of the reasons people like turkey basters is because they are long and you can just do a shallow amount of water and be able to easily see all of your stones versus a smaller bath where the stones might be piled on top of one another. You can use a crock pot to use as a hot stone bath heater. Um, the nice things about crocs, po crock pots is they're inexpensive. You can find some of the cheapest ones between $15 to $20, and they're much more portable than a turkey roaster, which is quite large. Um, I've seen massage therapists running around with those tiny little cute um, crock pots. They're only about 10 inches in diameter. They're round a circle and they only put like five or six stones in them. And that's fine if you're not doing like a full body hot stone massage. The cons with using a crock pot is because they're smaller and more compact. Um, if you do have a full hot stone set, the stones are usually sitting on top of each other and it's hard to see them. Okay. It's not very shallow and um, you're usually with your water bath because all of the stones must be immersed. Um, it's kind of hard to see the stones uh, when they're piled on top of each other in a crock pot. Now, one of the biggest cons of using a crock pot is it's usually minimal temperature settings. So it's really hard to adjust the temperature when your choices are low or high. <laughs> Um, you know, I'd like to be able to control the temperature a little bit better than using two settings, low or high. Um, this is a digital um, temperature uh, thermometer on a crock pot that were pictured here. Don't be fooled by some of these digital thermometers. You think that would display numbers. Sometimes they might only display three settings like low, medium, and high. Um, it's usually best to get a stone bath um, heating device that you can set the temperature to your exact operating range, which should be between 120 and 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and if you can't do that, you should hopefully get a heating device where you can minimally turn up the temperature um, for hotter or cooler to continue to control the temperature during hot stone massage. Let me review some of the improper or inappropriate ways that stones are heated. First of all, we do not recommend using hot towel cabbies for hot stone um, heat, okay, to heat a hot stone. Um, I, we use these at the Ritz-Carlton, which is considered to be, you know, one of the best spas in the world, right, the Ritz-Carlton spas. but. Um, just because it has the brand name doesn't mean that it's best uses or applications. Your hot towel cabbies are usually set for a temperature around 150 degrees. And the maximum, absolute maximum operating range of a hot stone should not be hotter than 135 degrees. You're not even going to be able to hold the stone at 150 degrees. And if you somehow magically can, you're probably going to burn a client. Uh, with that temperature as well. So we do not recommend using hot towel cabbies to heat stones. We also do not recommend kitchen griddles. I'll never forget walking into this organic spa in South Beach, very well known, very popular, very loved spa, and they were heating stones on kitchen griddles. <laughs> I saw the kitchen griddle in the 
in the pantry. I'm like, what's this for? And it's like a spawn pantry to mix scrubs and wraps. And they're like, oh, that's the stone heater. It's like, no, it's not. <laughs> what happens, why, why a stone um, should not be heated on a griddle is because the side, the surface side on the next to the air that's not on the griddle is going to be cold, while the side that is contacting the griddle will be extremely hot, probably whatever temperature is set on the griddle. So that contributes to an unevenly heated stone. And heaven forbid you have the cold side that was exposed to the air in your palm and the hot side, which might be more than 135 degrees massaging the client, you can easily burn them with such an unevenly heated stone. This is why we recommend that the stones be immersed in a water bath so that the temperature is fairly consistent on the entire external surface of the stone. There are thermophores and moist heat pads that um, this is a great way to heat stones if you are an on-call massage therapist and you are these can be adapted with a you know cigarette lighter or something you can use an adapter and just plug it into your car as you're driving to your next appointment and you can arrive with some hot stones right the problem with these is um, you don't know what the temperature of the stone truly is and it's probably not going to retain the heat very long or very well um, either. So while this is a creative alternative to be to use to heat stones, um, it's definitely not recommended. We also do not recommend using a microwave to heat stones ever due to the high metallic contents that is within the stone. You want to put silverware in your microwave, so you're definitely not going to put stones in your microwave because they're iron rich and have other metals too. Now, once you find your heater, an appropriate heater that fully immerses your stones in bath water at 120 to 135 degrees, we recommend having a second thermometer in that heater, okay? And make sure your thermometer is large enough. I purchased this as an example of something that's kind of small. Even with my reading glasses on, I have a hard time reading this. You can use digital thermometers, meat thermometers as a second temperature check in your heating device. The most important thing here is to make sure your stones do not get too hot and burn yourself or your client or both of you. Okay, so maintaining that temperature in a proper operating range is your most important criteria when selecting your hot stone bath heating unit. Now I do have to add a small training disclaimer right now and that is hot stone massage has become one of the most dangerous practices in massage therapy and it's kind of surprising that it's not deep tissue massage or neuromuscular or something it's hot stone massage that's usually the number one risk to massage therapists and clients because clients are being burned okay and that's through improper application of hot stone massage so please make sure that if you are going to practice hot stone massage you have been properly and recently trained because there are a whole lot of updates that have changed in hot stone massage practice to prevent injuries and burns to you and your clients. Now we have a whole lot more to teach about hot stone massage application in addition to selecting the right heating unit to heat your stones. We do things such as add tea tree essential oil to the bath, we do advocate the use of slotted spoons and more. This is all in our pre-recorded home study training available at our school website, ceinstitute.com. When you purchase our home study training, it's available to you immediately. You get an email, you access it. It's available 24 hours a day seven days a week until the course access expires and there you will learn so much more if you take one of our home study classes in hot stone massage above and beyond what to select to heat your stones so we hope you enjoyed this tiny portion of a course unit in our hot stone massage home study training and until we see you in class be safe